Welcome to finding zeros of rational functions. In this video, we're going to learn exactly how to do that, how to find the zeros, solutions, x-intercepts, roots of rational functions. All right, so where to find zeros in a rational function? The real zeros, let me stop right there. We're not worried about imaginary zeros here, people. Real zeros only. The real zeros of a rational function correspond to the real zeros of the numerator for such values in its domain. What I mean by that is that if you have a value that's not in the domain, it cannot be a zero. It's not in the domain. It doesn't exist for the function. So don't call it a solution or a zero. So zeros of a rational function are values that make the numerator equal to zero, but only if those values are in the domain. If a value makes both the numerator and the denominator zero, it is not a solution. Because if you make the denominator zero, if you watch the video that I made over the domain of rational functions, if you make the denominator equal to zero, you are not in the domain. You need to be skipped over. Therefore, it cannot also be a solution at the same time. That wouldn't even make sense. You, you know, when this scenario happens that you make both the numerator and denominator zero, that's something for a later video. Hope you keep watching. So let's dive right into some examples so we can actually try this out. In these first two examples, we see poly or rational functions that are already factored. This makes the math way simpler, and we could probably just use mental math. All right, in this first example, again, I'm looking at what values make the numerator zero. Well, I probably don't need to show this work by will anyway. If x plus 2 equals zero, that means x has to be negative 2. So if I plug in a negative 2 right here, I don't even care what the other factor is. I'm going to get a zero. And the other factors, 3x minus 1, set it equal to 0, add 1, divide by 3, I get 1 third. So there's another number that makes my numerator equal to 0. Now, wait a minute. What about negative 4? Is negative 4 0? No, it's not in the domain. Negative 4 makes the denominator 0. Those are values that are not in the domain. They're not going to be solutions. You're not allowed to divide by 0. Those don't work. Now, the reason why I kind of checked that, though, to be honest with you, is I do need to make sure that the two values I list don't also make the denominator zero. If they also make the denominator zero, those are not solutions. So since negative two and one third do not make the denominator zero, only the numerator, those are my official solutions. All right, let's check this next one. Again, I'm looking at that numerator. X plus two could equal zero. That means negative two makes the, makes the numerator equal to zero. 3x minus 1 equals 0, add the 1, divide by 3, 1 third makes the numerator equal to 0. But wait a minute, x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 4 are not in the domain because they make the denominator equal to 0. So they cannot be solutions because they're not even in the denominator. So I just have to check that the two zeros I list, or more or less, don't also make the denominator zero. Oh, wait a minute. Negative two makes both the numerator and the denominator zero. I cannot list it as a solution because it's not. It's something completely different that we're going to talk about in a later video. I don't want to spoil it. So that means the only solution that specifically only makes the numerator, not the denominator zero, is one third. There's my sole solution. All right, let's try a couple more. Now, these ones, unfortunately, are not factored. So it's a little bit harder to see what values make the numerator zero. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work. So we're going to set the numerator equal to zero. And boy, if it was factored, it would be easy for me to see the possible solutions. So what am I going to do? Well, I can either factor it, or if you really feel that you're bad at factoring, feel free to use the quadratic formula. But I think this one's pretty easy to factor. The only way to separate an x is x times x. 35 is 7 times 5. And oh my gosh, if I get a 7x on the inside and a 5x on the outside, that combines to get my 12x in the middle. So this is a perfect factoring. Now, x plus 7 could equal 0, which means x equals negative 7. There's a number that makes the numerator 0. x plus 5 could equal 0, which means that x equals negative 5 is another number that makes the numerator 0. But if I stop now, I'm potentially going to make a grave mistake because what if negative 7 or negative 5 also make the denominator 0? Then they're not in the domain and they should not be listed as zeros. 
So, sorry to break it to you, I also have to determine what values make the denominator equal to zero. Oh, a lot of factoring here, I know. Again, if you're really bad at factoring, do not be afraid, you could use the quadratic formula. All right, let me attempt to factor this. Let's see here. So 2x squared can be broken up as 2x times x. Let's see here. How do you get a negative 35? Well, I got negative 7, positive 5, 5 and 7. Okay, I know a 5 and a 7, so let's see here. Let's do, um, hmm, let's do 5 here and 7 here. Okay, so on the outside, I'm going to get a 10x. On the inside, I'm going to get a 7x. Mm, that's not going to get a 9 in the middle. Whoop, sorry about that. That's not going to get a 9 in the middle. All right, so it looks like I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and see if I could flip around and get something else to work here. So maybe I do a, uh, let's see here, a 5 here and a 7 here. Okay, so that's 14 on the outside. 5 on the inside. Ooh, 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 a 14 and a 5 can get a 9. So I'm going to make this a positive 14 and a negative 5. So watch what's going to happen here. I got my 2x squared. I got my negative 35. On the outside, I got a positive 14x. On the inside, I got a negative 5x. That's going to get the 9x in the middle. All right, so this means that positive 5 halves is not in the domain. And this means that negative 7 is not in the domain because they make the denominator 0. So when I go back and check my two solutions, I realize, uh-oh, negative 7 makes both the, do the denominator and the numerator 0. So again, if I were to actually factor this, it would look like this. So on top, I got x plus 7 times x plus 5. In the denominator, I got x plus 7 and 2x minus 5. Uh-oh, I see a common factor. I see that negative 7 makes both the numerator and the denominator 0, so it cannot be listed as a solution. So what is it? Now eh, we'll talk about that in another video. So the only solution is negative 5. All right, let's take a look at this next one here. Uh, f of x equals x squared plus 3. All right, so let's see here. The numerator could be 0 if x plus 3 equals 0. That's pretty simple to solve in my head. x equals negative 3. Okay. Now I need to check, what about the denominator? Can the denominator be factored? Because, you know, listen, zeros do not come from the denominator. But I have to check because if you also make the denominator equal to zero, then you're not a solution. All right, so if I'm solving this, I'm going to subtract the negative 5 over, square root, square root. Oh, that's actually impossible. So the denominator has no values that make it zero. So in terms of domain, it would be negative infinity to infinity. There's not a single value that makes that denominator equal to zero. And even if you plug negative three in, negative three squared is nine, nine plus five is not zero. So essentially, I don't have to worry about negative three also making the denominator zero. Therefore, negative three only makes the numerator zero, meaning it's a zero, it's a solution. All right, let's try another one here. Okay, once again, it's not factored. Oh, no. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to factor to see if I could make this easy. Now, I want to remind you that there is a nice way that you could determine if a polynomial can be factored, especially if it's a quadratic. You could do b squared minus 4ac. That's the inside of the square root in the quadratic formula. If b squared minus 4ac is a perfect number, it means it can be factored. So I'm, I'm quickly going to take 3 squared minus 4 times 2, times negative 2, and I get a 25. That tells me the fact that, you know, b squared minus 4ac of the numerator is a perfect number, 25, it means it can be factored. So I'm going to go ahead and try to factor it. Why not, right? All right. Now, if you really don't like factoring, you are allowed to use the quadratic formula, but I like factoring. So 2x squared is 2x times x. The only way to break apart a 2 is 2 and 1. So I'm going to put a 2 here and a 1 here. So I got my 2x squared. I got my 2. Let's see here. I want the 2 to be positive and the 1 to be negative. That way I get a negative 2 and I multiply them. But on the outside, I get a positive 4x. On the inside, I get a negative 1x. And those combine to get a 3x. Okay, now what about, again, okay, so let's just stop right there for a second. That means that x equals 1 half, add the 1, divide by 2, is a value that makes the numerator 0. And x equals negative 2 is another value that makes the numerator equal to 0. But I got to check the denominator because I, if I also make the denominator 0, I have a problem. 
So how do you check? Well, you could plug one half in, just make sure you don't get zero. Plug negative two in, make sure you get zero. Or you could factor it to C. All right, so once again, is this factorable? Okay, let me see. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. So just to check, I'm going to do negative 4 squared, which is 16, minus 4, times A is 1, times C is 1, and I get the square root of 12. Okay, so by doing B squared minus 4AC for my denominator, I just learned that it's unfactorable. It does possibly have some solutions, meaning values that make the denominator equal to 0, but they're going to be irrational. They're not going to be 1 half. They're not going to be negative 2. So even though I can't factor the denominator, I do know for sure that 1 half and negative 2 aren't going to make it equal to 0. So I do have two final solutions of 1 half and negative 2. All right, let's do a couple more here. All right, let's see here. Uh, okay, once again, what numbers make my numerator equal to 0? So maybe I'm going to do x squared plus 3. I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to solve x squared equals negative 3, square root, square root, x equals, uh-oh, wait a minute, no solutions. That's going to be imaginary. We're not looking at imaginary solutions. We want real solutions. So apparently there are no numbers that make the numerator 0. So that means there are no solutions, no zeros to this rational function. Now, negative 2 is not in the domain. Negative 2 makes the denominator 0, but those aren't solutions. So why would I even list it? And if the numerator doesn't have any solutions, I don't have to worry about any overlap. All right, let's try this next one out here. Once again, I'm trying to figure out when my numerator, x squared minus 25, equals 0. Maybe I go ahead and factor this one if you want. That's an easy one. Most kids factor that to x plus 5 times x minus 5. You could also add the 25 over and take a square root, but when you take a square root, don't forget that you could get negative 5 or positive 5 as my solutions. Okay, that's great. I got two numbers that make the numerator 0. I just have to check, can either of them make the denominator 0? Oh, wait, yeah. X equals negative 5 makes the denominator 0, which means it's not in the domain. If it's not in the domain, I cannot list it as a solution. The only solution, therefore, is 5. <sighs> okay, that's it. That's how easy it is to find zeros. Honestly, you do have to be good at factoring. It does help. You could use the quadratic formula, but you need to be good at factoring. You've got to be able to find those zeros. I can't emphasize enough. Zeros only come from the numerator, but the reason why we also have to examine the denominator is just to make sure that a zero from the numerator doesn't also make the denominator zero because then it's no longer a solution because it's not in the domain. All right, hopefully that was easy and it wasn't too bad. Um, just good luck at factoring.